This device is advertised to give your Tesla Apple CarPlay function. And it's compatible with the Refresh S, the Model X, the Model 3, and the Y. However, from my real world experience, this is a product that only enthusiasts should buy because although it works 80% of the time, you will always find yourself having to troubleshoot it to work properly at times. This can be very distracting, especially while driving. Okay, this sells on Amazon for around $100. And this one is from Carlink. But no matter what brand you choose from, it's from the same manufacturer factory because they all look the same. A lot of people are drop shipping these, so watch out. But here's how it works. But first, we're from today's sponsor, NordPass Business. Are you tired of wasting valuable time and energy managing your company's digital wallet? Do you find yourself constantly jiggling multiple passwords and struggling to keep the sensitive information secure? Well, worry no more. Introducing NordPass Business, the ultimate password management designed to optimize your workflow and protect your valuable data. With NordPass Business, you can save time and focus on what matters most. Say goodbye to the burden of accessing business accounts and working across multiple devices and apps. NordPass streamlines the process, allowing you to log into your account securely and seamlessly in just a matter of seconds. How often do you or your colleagues find yourself scrabbling passwords on sticky notes or searching through multiple files for login information? It's time to put an end to that. NordPass security stores and organize all your confidential information in one place. So why waste another minute struggling with passwords, management, and data security? Join the thousands of businesses already benefiting from NordPass business by heading on over to NordPass and use the promo code you see on the screen to get started today. Step one, connect it to your Tesla via USB-C. Cables are all provided. There's a SIM card slot, so you can actually bypass the need to always put your phone in hotspot mode. Personally, I think it's a ripoff to add another cell phone data plan line to your current existing cell phone plan. So for most others, you can skip this because it's just optional. Step three, Connected to Bluetooth, which is what we're using, and it worked perfectly fine. So again, we don't have to use the SIM card. Then turn on your phone hotspot. Connect the car to the device via Wi-Fi and enter the eight digit password. And then you are required to change your iPhone setting to this emoji icon and set the hotspot password to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could change it later, so it's not too basic for others to get access to your hotspot. Then enter this URL in the Tesla web browser app. And then just let it connect. Takes a while, but it is connecting. And bada bean, bada boom, you're all set. Number nine, for me, this didn't work at first try because they didn't tell you this in the manual that you do need to reset your devices, including your vehicle and then enter this IP address first to make sure your device is on the latest firmware update. But once you enter this IP number on your iPhone, you can actually tap software update. You can check for software updates to make sure your device is always working optimal. But once you connect, you're all set. And there is like a one second delay between the wireless. This lag isn't uncommon as most wireless CarPlay vehicles always have like a second delay. This isn't anything new. However, we do have Siri control, media control, and the car can actually control your car play as well to skip track and pause and play. All that works really well. And once you're connected, you stay connected. And that's the fact that once you're connected, you remain connected. And the fact that you made it this far to this part of the video tells me that you can actually handle the troubleshooting problems. And then if you wish to change the Wi-Fi password, you just simply tap on the car icon on the Apple CarPlay section. And here you'll find some Wi-Fi settings, including the capability to change your password and much more. Something I almost forgot to mention is on the display section right here, you can actually enable night mode to be 
always on but in addition to that you can actually change like the night mode starting time and then the resolution so you can select hd or if you wanted to be snappy and fast you can select fast or auto where you could just adapt based on the situation uh frame rate you could put it fast as well it will reboot whenever you change each setting so you do have to go back but all this is personalizable and you can also change the mode which basically will do these two different modes we get these like three row stacks as well as like a bigger map layout why does that always show my dress there we go i am serious suggesting i swear so it's really neat that you could customize at least the display settings to your own personal preference that's basically it <laughs> And that's why a lot of people are giving this device bad reviews on Amazon and such. Even though it actually does work great, it's just somewhat complicated. This is why I say it's only for the enthusiasts. Because it's not a first party, there will be some bugs, but it's all easy to work out. So long as you understand how this product works, it, should be, it shouldn't be any issues to troubleshoot. But I have noticed that once I'm home, my phone continues to stay connected to CarPlay even though my vehicle is turned off. Which this is honestly the biggest con because I always have to unplug it once I'm done driving and I'm home. Every time you get back in your car, you will need to make sure your hotspot is turned on on your cell phone and then your Tesla is connected to the device via Wi-Fi, not LTE. And then you gotta make sure you bookmark the URL which is very easy to do so. You just tap the little folder with the star icon and just add to favorites. Also, you can actually launch it on the Tesla web browser. But once you do that, you're good. And then you can use move the web Tesla web browser around to the left or right side. Just unfortunately, there's no way to make it full screen mode. But the icons are big, bright. Apple Maps or even Google Maps work really well if you're tired of the Tesla. Sometimes it's not really consistent. So yeah, even though it's a pain to connect sometimes, it's currently the only easy way to get Apple CarPlay to work on our Teslas. And it's a much more friendlier method than having to build a Raspberry Pi. And you don't have to pay for those other ones that are basically the same little box. So it shouldn't cost you more than $99. At least that's how much it costs me. I'll have links to the original selling seller on Amazon in the video description down below via a affiliate link. So although it is annoying to use, once it's connected, it works amazingly. Just like it does with other cars with wireless CarPlay capabilities. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to find out some amazing things that Apple CarPlay can do, check out this video over here where I cover my favorite apps you can download that are third party and you can actually install for CarPlay. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.